In this week's Torah portion, we read that God commands Moses to send 12 spies, one from each of the tribes, to scout out the land of Israel. You know, we know about 40 years of desert wandering, but in fact, the original plan was after a couple of months the, that uh, the Israelites would go more or less directly into the land of Israel. And so they're ready to do that, and these spies are deputized to go into the land, and they come and they bring back a report. And 10 of the spies say, yeah, sure, it's a good land, but the people that will have to conquer there are giants, like literally giants, and the city walls, the fortifications are so high they reach the heavens. And the people sulk in their tents and refuse to go up with God's help and Moses' leadership to conquer the land. Even though the other two spies, Caleb and Joshua, say, with God's help, we can do anything. Friends, we find ourselves today in a situation where the enemy that confronts us is gigantic. A global pandemic with no vaccine, no reliable treatment, and little understanding of how the virus works and, and growth in numbers of cases. And we face high walls. A system of racism in this country since 1619, when Africans first were brought to this shore to be enslaved. These twin problems facing our society could be enough to make any of us fold our tents and despair of a brighter future. And yet, our Musar tradition teaches us the midah of bitachon, of having trust. Now, not a blind trust, not to say, well, God will take care of this problem but a trust that if we do the right things, if we wear our masks when we go in public, and everybody wears their masks when we go in public, if we don't go in public more than we need to, perhaps we can keep ourselves safe. If we support real experts and follow the advice of real experts, perhaps we will be well until there is a vaccine, there is a cure. And if we will keep plugging away at the problem of systemic racism in the United States, never denying the problem, but always believing that God is on our side when we work to build a better future, then perhaps with Joshua and Caleb, we can say, surely we can go up and possess the promised land. I'm going to read from chapter 13 of the book of Numbers, Parshat Shlach Lecha, um, for, uh, chapter 14, verses 25 through 30. <laughs> וישובו מתוך הארץ, מקץ ארבעים יום. And the spies returned from the land at the end of forty days. וילכו ויבואו אל משה ואל אהרון ואל כל עדת בני ישראל. And they came to Moses and to Aaron and to all of the house of the congregation of the children of Israel. אל מדבר פרן, who were waiting for them in the wilderness of Paran. Kadesha, in a place called Kadesh. Vayashivu Otam Davar, and they brought their report. Ve'et kol ha'eda, and through all of the community, vayarum et pri ha'aretz, and they showed them the fruit of the land. Vayasapru lo, vayomru, banu el ha'aretz, asher shalachtanu, וגם זבת חלב ודבש היא. 
the Zephyrion. And they said, we came into the land where we were sent, and it is indeed a good land flowing with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Ephes, Oz, Ha'am, Hayoshev, Ba'alef. But there is a mighty people living in that land. Baharim, Batsurot, Gudolot, Ma'od, and the walls, the fortifications of the cities are extremely high. And literally, we saw giants there. Amalek Yoshev Ba'aretz. The Amalekites live in the land, in the, in the Negev in the south. Vahachiti, Vahebusi, Vahayamori, Yoshev Bahar. And the Hittites and Jebusites and Amorites live in the mountains. Vahaknani Yoshev Al Hayam. And the Canaanites live near the sea. Va'al Yad Hayarden, and next to the Jordan. Va'yahas Kalev et Ha'am. But Caleb hushed the people. El Moshe, before Moses. Va'yomer, and he said, Alona Aleph, let us surely go up. Va'yarashru Ota, and we will possess the land. Ki'achol Nuchalwa, for we are capable. Shabbat Shalom.